Hello, and welcome to Legal Management Talk, the official podcast of the Association of Legal Administrators. I'm your host, Justin Askenazy. So as we uh, start ramping up to the ALA's annual conference that's coming up in uh, the middle of May, you know, we sometimes hear a legal management talk, uh, like to talk to some of our conference speakers and kind of get a sneak peek of what they have planned for their presentations. And today is one of those days. So joining us is Elise Powers. She is the founder of LFU Consulting. And her presentation at annual conference is how to re-energize your firm's mentorship program. And that's going to be at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, May 22nd, so the morning session of day three of the conference. Welcome, Elise. Really great to have you. Excited to uh, talk a bit about mentorship today. Yeah, thanks so much, Justin. So let's kind of start with uh, the basics. So in a world where everybody's got so much going on and, uh, you know, their time is being asked of them in so many different places. Why is it important for firms to establish or reinforce their mentorship program? It's essential. And there's several reasons why it's a worthwhile investment. First of all, we live in an environment where people are working in a, a hybrid world and it's even harder to build a relationship with colleagues. And the only way a professional services firm really runs well is if a team works cohesively and collaboratively. And in order to do that, they have to know each other and understand one another. So by creating a foundation of a mentor program, you equip the younger professionals, junior attorneys to meet more senior attorneys who can guide them through the ups and downs of their careers, who can provide advice when they're not sure how to approach an assignment. You also equip the more senior attorneys to understand how to work better with the more junior attorneys who are continuously joining their groups year after year. So these mentor relationships not only increase retention because people feel stronger bonds to one another, but it also leads to better client service. Yeah. And so firms that are looking to create a mentorship program, what are some of the ways, and by the way, you know, stop me if, uh, if I'm, you know, infringing on stuff you want to keep for your presentation, uh, you know, we don't want to obviously give everything away, but uh, how do, how should firms kind of start structuring their program to make sure it's uh, effective? So step one is exactly what you said, that there has to be a structure, a really clear, defined structure that a firm holds themselves accountable to. So step one is to figure out what is the objective of our mentor program and then to build for that. So you might say, well, we want to ensure that at each stage of someone's career, they have a mentor who's a little bit more senior than them. So that means our first years, their mentors are probably mid-level associates. For our mid-levels, it might be junior partners. For our senior associates, it might be senior partners. And then you get into, well, how are we going to match people? How are we going to pair them up? Are we going to allow people to weigh in and request certain mentors or mentees? And then once you have the mentor pairings figured out, it's really about what is the structure we want to encourage people to stick to? So are you making recommendations for the cadence at which people should be meeting? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Is it totally up to them? You also might want to provide guidance on what they should talk about in their mentor meetings. So you might provide conversational prompts or a monthly or quarterly theme. And then there has to be some level of accountability. How are you making sure that the pairings are successful, that people are meeting, and that they know what to do if they're not getting what they want from their mentor? Uh, finally, you also want to provide training for mentees and mentors around how can each of them take some ownership in making sure this is a really fruitful, positive, meaningful, and mutually beneficial mentorship relationship. So 
being sure to tell each party what they should be bringing to the table, how they can prepare for those conversations, uh, that will really set a program up for success. Yeah. And obviously to, to make it beneficial it requires effort on behalf of both parties and um, uh, especially probably older partners, they uh, obviously they're, they're rightfully focused on, on their work. So how, uh, how do you convince partners to take the time and the effort to participate in a mentorship program? Gosh, it can be a tough sell, right? Because partners are busy. They've gotten to where they are in their career because they're great at client service. They're obsessed with delivering for the clients. They're technical experts. And that leaves very little free time to do things that aren't uh, absolutely essential. So what we've learned is that the key is to position this time investment in the context of how it benefits the partners. So they're not doing this just to be a good person. It makes their life a whole lot easier when they have trusted associates that they can delegate work to. And the only way to really have these trusted associates who you know will represent you and the firm in a positive way is by showing them the ropes, teaching them how they should interact with clients, by ensuring that they understand how to think big picture and have a deeper understanding of all the moving parts in a matter, in a project or case. And so that requires a time investment of mentoring, advising, coaching these more junior attorneys. So not only does the firm benefit as a whole, but each individual partner benefits from investing in the development of more junior attorneys because it simply frees up their time to do the more interesting, more complex work because they have a solid team they can rely on. Exactly. And I think that also helps with, uh, you know, strategic things like uh, succession planning, because mm -hmm. then it kind of gets the the younger associates and younger partners more experience in in working with clients and uh, and then and allows them to slide in easier once the the older partner does eventually leave the firm. Absolutely. I think there's this element of the firm needs to continue to succeed and deliver for clients over decades. And so it's the responsibility of current firm leadership to prepare the firm uh, to be able to do that by equipping this next generation of partners or counsel to be able to lead these client projects. Uh, so there's for sure an element of succession planning and, and really just a responsibility to give these more junior attorneys the experiences that will excite them, that will continue to stretch them, that will make them just better lawyers. Yeah. Have you found in your experience that uh, there can be a, a kind of gap in the way that um, uh, more experienced attorneys and newer attorneys are, uh, are able to, um, you know, think about the way the, the legal industry is today? And is that kind of an obstacle to, uh, you know, making sure it, there's a strong mentorship component? Yeah, there's certainly intergenerational tension that's coming up, not just in law firms, but in any organization around the world. We now have five generations in the workforce. And with the uh, fast paced growth of technology, the generations are more different than ever because they have vastly different lived experiences. So that creates a lot of, of differences in terms of how they approach their work, what role a career plays in someone's identity. Uh, we think about baby boomers and their work, their career had a huge factor of how they think about themselves. They often viewed themselves in this lens of, of their career. Whereas we see millennials and Gen Z view career as just one part of their life. They're uh, much more vocal in terms of asking for what they want in setting boundaries for themselves. And this isn't a bad thing at all. In many ways, it's a very good thing, but it can cause that tension when you have generations that just view the role of work very differently. 
So that's why mentorship becomes increasingly important because we want that shared understanding. The more people get to know one another, the more they can understand one another. And that builds empathy and it makes people feel like they're understood, that they're safe at work because people get them and respect them. So there's no way around it that this is a time investment. You can't get to know someone in a second, in, in just a one five minute conversation. It takes time, it takes those repetitions because trust is built over time. And so this mentorship dynamic allows both parties to understand one another better. And there's just uh, no way for any team to be successful long-term if there isn't shared mutual understanding. Right. I know one obstacle that there's been to not only mentorship, but, you know, in office collaboration and uh, everything that goes along with working in the same space is hybrid work. And that, um, you know, a lot of people have, some people have really succeeded in that format. Some people have struggled. So um, when you're trying to make a robust mentorship program, how do you uh, do that within the confines of, of hybrid and remote work? So it depends on the size of a firm. If it's geographically dispersed. You have, you know, 10 different offices around the country or 30 different offices around the world, depending on how big the firm is. The mentorship pairing can take on a lot of different uh, views. One, you could say we only want to pair people in the same office so they can come into the office or go out to lunch and, and have that in-person element to their mentorship relationship. You might also have the perspective that we want people to intentionally be paired with those who don't work in the same office with them so that they can broaden their horizons and really diversify their relationships. So in a hybrid world, if you are working in different offices, it doesn't really matter because you wouldn't be together anyways, even if you, um, you know, because you're not in the same office. So in that sense, hybrid doesn't make a huge difference. The goal there is always, if one of you is in the other person's office, obviously you should prioritize getting together, getting together in person, uh, having coffee. When you are having your mentor meetings virtually, almost always they should be done over video because it's so much easier to read a person's body language and build that trust when you can see them. If you're working in the same office, uh, you know, one of the challenges that comes up in our workshops around mentorship and relationship building is how do you express vulnerability when your mentor is also your supervisor, supervising attorney? You have this working relationship and maybe some of the challenges you're navigating are related to your mentor in that capacity of being your supervisor. So in this situation, we recommend that the mentor pairings, when possible, have those mentor chats outside of the office. And this just separates, it's just a mental thing, separates that this is a work conversation from this is a mentor conversation. When we're out of the office, we're not talking about the nitty gritty tactics of the work we're doing together. We're talking about my mentee's career development. So that is one way to think about how to overcome this obstacle of hybrid work where people are just missing one another um, in, in terms of just not being in the office on the same day or making it less likely that you have those casual run-ins. Right. Um, and then also, you know, recruiting and retention is something that's very obviously important for, for firms and... I know lots of times you can, you know, you can give a list of these are the things that make your firm attractive to to new recruits. And, you know, often mentorship is on that list. So how can firms really uh, walk the walk on making sure that their mentorship program really does uh, attract people to their firm? Yeah, this is a huge recruiting advantage and honestly the the talent market for law firms is is very competitive and so the more you can do to show that you care about 
these new law school grads as a person, not just as, you know, how much can they bill, the more attracted they're going to be to your firm. And so I think by saying we're going to pair you with a junior or mid-level associate who is two years removed from being a first year. So you have someone to go to or little questions for things you're not sure who to ask. Maybe you don't feel comfortable asking your supervising attorney. Uh, you might even provide a budget for them. Say, we're giving you $200 uh, every half of the year, every six months to go out to lunch, go out to meals with your mentor. So you're also investing in the success of their relationship building. And then there's also this element of being sure that when you talk to your incoming class of attorneys, uh, you're reassuring them that if this isn't a good fit, who they got paired with, that they should come to you, make them feel comfortable coming to you and asking for a different pairing. And, and I think there's a lot of fear for mentees about well, that's going to be really awkward if I ask for a new mentor. My mentor is going to know I didn't like them. It's going to hurt our relationship. And the firm should have, most firms do have a way of gracefully going about this conversation where it doesn't seem like someone requested a change. So maybe that looks like uh, you tell the mentor, you know, Elise said that she's really interested in building up her skill set with deposition. So we're going to actually give her a different mentor who does a lot of depositions just so she can learn that specific skill set. And we're going to give you a new mentee who is uh, really eager to learn from you because you're the expert on business development or whatever it is. There's ways of gracefully going about it. So the mentees feel comfortable asking for what they need, because the worst thing that can happen is, you know, suffering in silence. You don't feel like you're getting what you thought you would from your mentor, but you're not really sure how to go about asking for a change. So all of this should be clearly communicated and normalized with your associates uh, so that they know when they come to this firm, they are empowered to get the advice and guidance that they need. I also think there's an element of remembering that first year associates in particular, summer associates as well, are incredibly insecure. They feel vulnerable. They're nervous. They might not have ever experienced the working world before and signaling that you understand this stage of life that they're in and you're providing every possible resource to support them through this really important transition in their personal and professional lives. It's just such a significant, impactful way of recruiting and retaining these uh, junior attorneys. Yeah, and I know those uh, those kind of conversations can be very hard to navigate, and yet so important for uh, to make sure everybody's uh, comfortable and on the same page. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it it really takes a, an element of psychological safety in the firm culture and in specific relationships. Maybe it's with the PD or attorney development uh, person or recruiting even. And then the attorneys that they're supporting. Yeah. So lastly, before we depart, um, I know we we talked about a lot of a lot of good inf information today. Uh, what what else can people expect from your your presentation if they uh, if they want to attend? It's going to be a high energy, fast paced, fun session. We are going to be interacting via polls and chatting in. I'm going to be sharing what we've seen our clients do really well. And then we'll be seeing other firms do not so well when developing their mentor program so that everyone in the audience doesn't have to learn the hard way. Uh, we're going to talk about generational dynamics, how to overcome the, the challenges and tension that come with that. And then I'm also going to be providing really concrete, actionable tools and techniques that they can apply and bring back to their firms so they can really strengthen or even build out for the first time an awesome mentorship program. So I'm really excited to be at the conference. Yeah, great. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're tuning in and you want to be sure to uh, attend Elisa's session uh, along with uh, all the other fun stuff at conference, please uh, be sure to register now. There's still time. And uh, you can go to alaannualconf.org to do that. So uh, thank you so much, 
Elise, for being here. It was uh, great chatting with you. And uh, you know, uh, uh, I wish you uh, all the best on your, your presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you to our viewers and listeners for tuning in. If you want to hear more legal management talk, you can uh, do so by subscribing to our YouTube channel or uh, catching us wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, you can learn more about ALA at alanet.org. Until next time. <laughs>